Hey guys, this is Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia, studying ninth grade in Yambo International School. Today, our topic is related to motion. Okay, and all of you know that when we have motion, and we can predict how much the velocity is, how much the acceleration is. Okay, and things like that. So what we are going to do is here is it's it's not a straight like we talked about in previous section like displacement or distance. It's not none of that. The it's kind of strange kind of uh, pathway that we are going to talk about to find the velocity and acceleration. You might get you guys might get shocked. Okay, now the here we're going to talk about lots of different things and lots of formulas for my physics students. Okay. In this section, we'll be going to discuss on, um, let's say, centripetal force, what is period, what is Newton, uh, law of universal gravitation, what is tangent, what is circum uh, circumference, and altitude. Okay, now the last three words, tangent, circumference, and altitude, are, uh, are words that you can find it in math textbooks, but you guys know from my first video that physics and math are kind of related so you have addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and think more than that okay there's more than that so let's talk about motion which is rather very peculiar ways which is circular motion so I'm going to name it dynamics circular motion Okay. So, you you guys might have guessed that we're going to find a pathway or a velocity acceleration which is moving in a circular path. Okay. So, let's go ahead and begin our topic with uh, dynamic circular motion. And the first keyword that we're going to learn is centripetal force. Okay, what is centripetal force? So, since before going to that, since we started talking about Newton's law, okay, I won't, uh, I won't be explaining this in too detail. But if you want to learn, you can go back to my Newton three laws of motion and learn from that. Okay, here I want to, uh, I want you guys to be focusing on um, this. Let me write, write down object. Accelerates when unbalanced force is applied. Okay, so I want you guys to remember this. Now think about it. Object move, objects accelerate when unbalanced force is applied. Recall that when there is balance force, the net force is zero. And how do we represent net force? It's by sigma. Like I told you before, sigma also represents total force. Like, for example, what is net force? Okay. Now, for those people who have a job, uh, this is just an example. Okay. So, if your mom or dad, or if you are working, you get a net salary. Okay. Now, what is net salary? Well, you get a specific amount of salary. Okay, from that the tax is being deducted and whatever money you receive is the net salary. So it's the after all deducting all the methods through it, going through all the process, whatever money you get is your net salary. Okay? So the, for example, for this is when you are turning a corner, okay, whenever you are turning a corner the object is being accelerating okay I want you guys to remember that now I'm just gonna take this off because okay okay I want to clean the board so uh, he, the force and velocity vector will have some angle between them okay now I'm talking about things that is being accelerating okay so when it's mo uh, turning a corner okay uh, it accelerates. Why? Because the force and velocity vector will have same angle between them, right? So the direction of the 
action, okay, the direction of the action are neither parallel nor opposite to each other. Thus, we can say that they are accelerating, okay? Now, like I told you, sigma represents net force. So, so let me go ahead and write sigma. This means net force. Though it also means total force. Okay? So what is net force? What does net force do on circular motion? What is its part? Well, net force is pulling the object into the circle, okay? It's pulling the object into a circle and to, uh, it's pushing them towards the center of the circle, okay? When this happens, okay, physics names it centripetal force because all the forces are being attracted towards the center of the circle. So we can say center pedal force. You can you can even see by the prefix center pedal force. Okay, so the force is being attracted towards the center. Okay, so that's basically it. Now, how is it being attracted? Okay. Okay. So we have a circle. Okay, something like that. We have to make a center, and let's say this was a radius. R A D I S. Radius. Okay. Now, if you have a point right here, it's touching the point. If you make a straight line, which is tangent to it, it will make a 90 degree um, angle. Okay. Now. This is the motion of the object. Now I'm going to teach you when this happens in real life. Okay? And this line is called tangent. Okay? This line over here is represented tangent. Now let me go back and tell you what is tangent because it was it was one of our keywords, right? So tangent line is a basically perpendicular to radius of the circle. Now, how can we tell this? That it's accelerating. Well, as you guys can see, when it's moving, it's turning every, every time it's turning uh, its uh, direction. So when it's, turning, when it's turning a corner, what happens? It's accelerating. Okay? Now, always remember that. Okay? So I think we can now apply equations, okay, to the circular motion. Okay, now how would we derive it, the formulas? What are the main formulas? Well, you guys already know one if you watch my video. Okay. So, let me write. The one we know is the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And whatever I write in black is always the final equation, okay? Now, how do we find the acceleration on an object if it's uh, moving in a uh, uh, circular motion? Circular, okay? Circular motion. So, when we have a circle like this, and suppose this was our pathway, okay? Now, we can tell that acceleration always depends on velocity and time okay the more uh, velocity is your uh, speed okay when you're uh, increasing your speed we can say hey dude you're accelerating when you're decreasing your speed you may say hey dude you're decelerating okay because you're decreasing your velocity and when you increase the velocity it's acceleration and it, ha it depends on the period of time, okay? So, if there was a circle, and here is this, okay, let me draw this first and then let me explain you, okay? So, Now, let 
me go ahead and label this for you. Now, I'm just gonna zoom this in so you guys uh, understand very well. Okay, so this is a ten. Uh, this is tangent or um, theta. Sorry, this is theta again because it has some kind of angle. It's moving, and when it's moving, okay, it's going this way. Okay, the motion is this way. Okay, this way. Okay, so we can tell if we extend this line over here this is called v1 velocity 1 and if we were to extend this line it's v2 okay and when we have two velocities we know we have to find the change in velocity which is delta v okay since we are using delta v now we have to use change in time as well okay now this is displacement okay Displacement is represented as change of s. Okay, remember that. Okay, now the key formula, which I'm going to tell you. Let me just focus. You guys focus on this. Okay. Now, you guys, let me talk about this triangle. There are two triangles over here. One, two, are shown to be proportional to each other. So when they are being proportional, okay, we can find the acceleration to be a is equal to change in velocity over time. Change in time. Okay. Now, if we were to if we were to combine these two formulas, let me go ahead and erase this circle because I think you, all, you guys already got the concept okay if you were to combine these two formulas and always remember this okay let me let me tell you after I'm done solving the formula so this always comes over here now remember these three formulas they give you it's very useful to find the speed or uh, force force of attention, force of support, force, any kind of force in circular motion. So we have mass. Okay. Now what happens is acceleration is replaced by this, but when it's replaced, it becomes V squared okay, over R. Now why R? Because uh, because we don't know the actual time. We know the radius, okay? We don't know how much uh, time it took. Okay? So this is how the formula was made and I don't know how they did it like this, but it's just the way it is. Okay. I can't help you with that. So these three formulas, you guys can see the formulas are are made to uh, are being made to uh, find the total force acceleration and to, uh, total net force okay so this is why they're being made okay now you can replace this value to find v to find radius and things like that if you know all of the information except one of them you can solve for now but the special thing over here is these are being made to find this And don't use this in every single thing, okay? I would recommend you not to use it in every kind of motion because this is basically representing a motion in which uh, it's including circular motion, okay? So when there is circular motion, please go ahead and try this formulas out and let's see if you can find the total force acceleration of an object moving in circular motion, then tension and things like that okay now how do we calculate velocity Ooh. we know that from our previous talks and if you didn't write this formula down go back and uh, write this formula down because I'm not gonna write it over and over 
okay? We know that velocity is equal to change in distance over change in time, okay? Now, understand the time part, okay? You can get the time, okay? You guys can get the time by calculating the time, but what about distance? It's in circular motion. I mean, come on. Who, got, who can get uh, distance around the circle? Well, here's how you do it. You, you know, that, and sorry, this is uh, including mathematics, even though you're watching physics videos, okay? I can't really help you how to determine distance without mathematics because it's used all over the place, places, okay? So, or different varieties in subjects, okay? So, this, if you were to have a circle like this, now how would you calculate the this part of the circle? Well, we know there's some special word called circumference. And how do you cal calculate circumference? Well, we calculate circumference by pi r squared. Okay? Uh, it's Let me just write it again. It's basically 2 pi r. Okay? Sorry for the misunderstanding one. The thing, okay. So it's two pi r, okay. So we know that distance is two pi r. So let's go ahead and replace distance with two pi r, and we can find the time, so t. And guess what? You just arrive at the velocity that is being determined in circular motion. pi r to calculate the whole circle. So 2 pi r over t. Okay, now what is period? When you have a circle like this and the amount of time it takes to complete one round of a circle is called period. That's it. Okay. So the we're going we are basically going around the circle as you guys can see. That is the reason why we need to find the distance to find the velocity. Okay. So if we were to have a distance, we can find the velocity, okay? So we do 2 pi r to calculate the distance, or divided by time, how much time it took, because time plays an important role, okay? No matter how, like, 3 seconds, it took you 3 seconds to travel uh, 10 kilometers, then you're going at high speed. But if it took you, um, let's say, 10 days to go 10 kilometers, you're probably going at slow speed. Okay, it time matters. Okay, so I would like you to now understand Newton's gravitational, universal gravitational. Okay, what it means, universal gravitational. Okay, Newton's law of universal gravitational. What it basically means is it gives you. Uh, the gravity, you have to take the gravity, which is being where well, it depends on where the location is, okay? So you multiply by mass 1 and mass 2, and we take two masses because you're comparing two objects and finding the gravity that is acting between them, okay? Now, suppose if I want to find gravity between me and this camera over here, what I need to do is find the mass of this camera, mass of me, okay? and the distance between us, okay, and the gravity that is being acting on us. So how are we going to use this information to find the force of gravity? Okay, I'm going to teach you. So, now this formula I would recommend you to remember, okay, though it is good if you do, but I don't think so. You're going to use this much. Okay, force of gravity, F of G. Okay, you can say gravity times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by distance, which is R. Because you see, it's in circular motion. That's the reason we put R over here. 
okay, not just distance. Now, we understand what we replace for gravity on Earth. On Earth, maybe everyone says, oh, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, now, we don't always talk about Earth, right? We talk about Mars, Jupiter, Sun, Moon, and things that is around it in space, surround that is moving in space. Okay, what about the satellites? What about those uh, ships that is being sent by NASA? What about those uh, planets? Okay, so what about those stars? So what we do is to find the gravity in space. Okay, the gravity today I'm going to be telling you guys and. You might be teaching everyone, okay? This is really kind of 6.67 times 10 raised to negative. You see, since it's a big number, you just put it in notification, scientific notification. So when you're uh, uh, using force of gravity in space, you apply this uh, this gravity, which is 6.67 times 10 raised to negative 11. Then you multiply that times mass 1, two objects you're comparing, right? So you to multiply by mass 1, times mass 2, and the radius of it, uh, radius of which from which you're comparing, okay? So, well, we know how to find the force of gravity now, okay? Now how do you find the uh, velocity of things in space? Uh, if you're talking about space, gravity always remains, okay? Mistake, yeah, we remove the R, okay? So, we need to talk about velocity. So, since we are talking about velocity, let me replace this with B. Now, you can only talk about velocity of one object. You can't uh, get velocity by solving one, uh, one, one example, okay, of two objects, okay? Now, all this is saying is, uh, which is the formula, this is the formula of force of gravity, and this being applied to velocity, it, it's totally wrong. Okay? Now, what we do is simply remove mass 1. Okay? And this is basically the equation for velocity. Okay? As you guys can see, okay? this is the, uh, how we find velocity. Now, let me just write it with a black marker since I'm writing all my main formula with black marker. Okay. So, now since we know that, let's go ahead and solve an example. Okay. Now, the example should be on your screen as well. Okay. If I after I erase this, because you guys, if I don't erase this, you guys might not see the question properly. That is the reason why I erase the whole board before giving you guys any form, uh, problems. Now, since it's a long section video, I just have uh, YouTube only allows me uh, to upload at some limit of time. But since I'm running out of time, I'm going to solve one example for you guys. Okay? Now the question goes like this. A kid is swinging a 3KD toy. The toy is attached to the string. At the end of the string, in horizontal circle, with a radius of 3 meters, the boy makes the whole circle complete in 0 0.235 seconds. What is the tension of the string? Okay. Now, we are given that the radius of the circle is 3 meters and it... Uh, it completes the whole circle in 0 0.235 seconds. Now, we have time, okay? We have radius. We can find the velocity, right? Let's go ahead. Though it's asking for tension. Okay? Tension. But remember, everything doesn't come out by one formula in physics. You have to apply lots of different formulas to arrive at uh, some kind of answer, okay? And then you plug that value into the original equation and you get what you were solving for. So, since we are here, 
to find the velocity. Okay, velocity is equal to two pi r. And remember, over time, the kid is basically moving the airplane toy or some kind of toy in round. Okay, so it's circular motion. That is the reason we put two pi r over t. This gives us distance. Okay, we know that r is equal to three. 2 times pi times 3. Over time, it took us to 0 0.235, I think. Yep. Seconds. I don't want to confuse you guys with any more pi. So, if you don't know what pi is over here, I would recommend you to watch my first video in pre calculus where I taught pi very well. Okay? Well, how pi was formed. Uh, the whole story of pi. So you might, get, you guys might want to watch that video after you're done with this. Okay, that's my opinion. I would recommend you. To. Okay. Now, if you were to solve this, you'd be getting 80.21 meter per second. Okay. Velocity. Let me write it this one. Velocity is equal to 80.21 meter per second. Okay. We found the velocity by using this. Okay. Now the upper part give us eight gives us eighteen point eight five and then we divide it by zero point two three five since it's a very small amount of numbers, thus it gives us long number. Okay. So the velocity was this much. He was moving at pretty fast. Now what we do is use this equation net force is equal to mass times velocity squared over r. Uh, you know the radius, okay? The mass is also be, uh, given as 3 kg so we just plug in the values that we are given and we get the force of tension okay? net force and force could be of anything here it's force of tension so force of tension tension is equal to 3 times plugging the value already 80.21 and this is being squared divided by radius which is 3 meter the tension force then is equal to Six, four, three, four newtons. Okay. Now, what is tension force? Well, if you he's move, he has some kind of strain, right? Like, let's say this was string and this was a ball that was being attached to the um, uh, string. Okay. Now he's moving in a circular direction. Okay. So he's moving in a circular direction like this. Okay. Now the force and his his hand is over here. Let's say this was his hand. Okay. Now the force that is being applied to the string, the it's called tension to the string. It's the tension force. Okay. I hope now I'm kind of running out of time, so I'm just gonna say. If you like my video, please go ahead and subscribe. I, I hope you understand this, how to find the tension if this guy was moving a toy in circular motion. And different types of circular motion, we use different types of formula. Okay, You don't use same same equation for same every different kind of problems. Okay, So I would recommend you to favorite this video if you like it. Okay, Like this video and please comment to give me a feedback. Thank you for watching.